Once when I was eating a delicious flat crispy cracker, I stopped and asked myself, self, this isn't bacon mac and cheese, so why does it taste like it? Because science. Duh. Give me one of these. No, no. You're not self. Hey there, D-News eaters. See what I did there, cat? Yeah. D-News eaters? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guys, this is Cat from Eater. I'm Trace. Since the Second World War, the American food industry has been designing food flavors for us. The USDA's Eastern Lab looked at apples back like 50 years ago while trying to mass produce apple juice, and they found 26 different flavor and aroma compounds, which when combined, create the essence of apple. But the concentration of those compounds was pretty low, at about 50 parts per million. Food scientists found pineapple naturally has 100 parts per million of similar compounds, and orange peel is super, super flavorful, much more so than the flesh. Armed with the molecular knowledge of these fruits, the USDA found one pint of fruit juice essence could flavor 100 pounds of fruit jelly. Whoa. Right. This was the beginning of flavor science. After the Second World War, a food flavoring movement burst onto the American pop culture scene, creating more exciting foods and flavors, like your favorite Chinese food enhancer, MSG, or monosodium glutamate. USDA's Western lab began to isolate more flavors and aromas, discovering the minimum amount of chemicals required to trigger receptors in the human nose, and how to synthesize those. For example, a compound called dicetyl gives popcorn, margarine, and candy a buttery flavor. It's naturally produced by yeast, so sometimes it shows up in Belgian beers, but can be created by dehydrogenation of a chemical called butaniol, a chemical used in solvents like floor stripper and paint thinner. Mm. Artificial flavors are non-toxic compounds. When ingested, they trigger the same responses as actual flavors, but they aren't the same thing. Famously, vanilla flavor can be pulled out of castoreum, which is produced by glands around the anus of a beaver. But come on, companies don't actually use that at all. They have way more interesting compounds in their arsenal. In fact, today, food chemists use more than 14,000 additives which alter appearance and make food, well, last longer. And they come from all over the world. But knowing what is natural isn't always easy. True. Let's play a game then. According to Fenaroli's Handbook of Flavor Ingredients, 5th edition, acacia gum is found in the branches and stems of the Acacia Senegal tree. It's spicy, sweet, fruity, and honey with a woody herbal nuance. Okay, and trimethylamine is a flammable gas or liquid with a fishy, ammoniacal odor made from paraformaldehyde and ammonium chloride. Okay, so based on those two, which is more natural? You can't really tell, because trimethylamine, although it sounds chemically, is actually a naturally occurring substance. It's in cheese, caviar, fish, beer, whiskey, coffee, shallots, bread, orange peel, oil, mushrooms, cooked beef, and so on and so on and so on. But acacia gum is used as a flavor fixative, foam stabilizer, and dairy emulsifier, mm. as well as in cosmetics, paper, textiles, inks, pharmaceuticals. We're not trying to be cheeky, but in the end, what we're trying to say is all food is made of chemicals and compounds, and you can't necessarily tell just by looking at them which ones are natural. So for example, cheeseburger flavored chips contain salt and corn and onion powder and mustard. But also the chemicals 4-hydroxy-5-methyl-3-2-H-furanone and 2-methyl-3-furanethol and bis-2-methyl-3-furyl-disulfide. Also known as natural beef flavor. These chemicals are made by taking beef stock and pressure cooking it. Then the water is distilled away, leaving only those three chemicals that I listed. From there, food chemists use the actual molecules left over from the stock or learn how to synthesize that chemical molecule on their own. Testing the flavors is decidedly low tech. Food chemists use trial and error with actual human super tasters as their guinea pigs. Once they have specific chemicals in their dilutions, they can select a flavor profile and make pretty much anything they want taste like anything else. Ultimately, your olfactory bulb and your taste buds are simply identifying the compounds in the food you eat. Scientists have known this for decades, and they use food chemistry to manipulate our senses and get us hooked. French fries taste good not just because of the salty, starchy awesomeness, but because some chemists determined the precise flavor profile that they wanted you to get, so you got hooked on it. Science, used for both good and evil. If you're into food, you should definitely check out Eater. Cat Odell is the best resource for where and what to eat or drink no matter where you are. Subscribe to their channel for all things food. It's great. How do you guys feel about cheeseburger chips or ketchup toast or flavor chemistry in general? Let us know in the comments. Cat, where can they find you over on Twitter? Cat underscore Odell. Or I am at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for watching.